All right, everybody, welcome back to the number one television program in the history of the entire universe. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, The Blackest Heart, and The Lonesome Crown, all three books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today I'm going to be reviewing <clears throat> Badlands by Richard Montaneri. This book came out in 2008. It is book number four in his Kevin... Byron, or Brian, and Jessica Balzano um, hard-boiled murder mystery series set in Philadelphia. I've got the entire series here. There's nine books. I've reviewed books one through three. Um, if you want to watch those video reviews, all you need to do is type in my last name, Durfee, into your YouTube search bar, followed by Richard Montaneri's name, and those video reviews will magically appear upon your television screen. I swear to God that they will. It's how the universe works. It's how the internet was set up to work. And if you're not even using your television, you can use your computer or your phone for this very same thing. Let's get into the book review. Um, book number four, Kevin Bryan and Jessica Balzano, two investigators in Philadelphia. And they have a lot of adventures through these books. They solve a lot of murders. A lot of serial killer murders, too. This opens up with a very creepy opening from the killer's perspective, which, after the four books of reading, that seems to be Richard Montaneri's sort of trademark, is to open these books with a little prologue from the killer's perspective, which is cool. And this one's a spooky one. It's set in a spooky mansion. Um, the killer is stalking his prey. Um, well, it, well, it's not set in it. There's, okay... In the prologue, there's a very spooky mansion. There's a killer who's stalking his prey through a shopping mall. There's a charming conversation between the killer and his prey over some greeting cards. And uh, that's kind of, it's just very chilling. It's a very kind of a cool, creepy little opening. Um, like I said, sort of Montaneri's trademark opening. Um, and then we go to the bulk of the book, and that and there's and it's there's a chapter heading called Shadow House, and I was like, that should have been the name of the book, Shadow House. That's a dope name. Not that Badlands isn't. Um, now Badlands is a neighborhood in Philadelphia, which um, apparently everybody that lives in Philadelphia must know about. Um, I you know, learning one of the things I love about reading is you learn different things about different cities that you don't really go to that often. So anyway. Um, Kevin and Jessica, our main two investigators, they've been newly assigned to the um, new Special Elite Investigations Unit, or the SIU. Um, and their first case is there's a girl, a young runaway girl named Caitlin, who's found dead in the Badlands, in the neighborhood, in a house in the Badlands, an abandoned house. Um, and they've got to solve this. Um, one other thing, and then it leads them to some other stuff. Uh, I started to take a lot of detailed notes of this book as I was reading through it. And then I realized all of my notes that I'm taking are leading to direct spoilers for the book. And I better not read them out loud. So I thought I would um, just give you a general kind of um, review of this. And then just read the jacket copy because that gives you a good taste of what's in the book without me spoiling it for you. And um, one of the things, I, before I do that, though, I will say the only negative part of this book that I found, which if I remember correctly in the first three books was not present, is there's a lot of flashbacks in this book. And, you know, flashbacks are one of my least favorite things to see in books. And these flashbacks go all the way back to 1938. I mean, this book was set in the 2008-ish. So we're getting a lot of flashbacks, some that go to 1938, some that go to 1978, some that just go back, but there's a lot of them. Um, I was not as interested in those flashback scenes as, um, and that's a fault of my own, and it's just one of those biases that I have that I need to get rid of. It's nothing wrong with Richard Montaneri or his writing, because as you know, I love this book series so far. I'm four books in, and these books are dynamite. So anyway, let me read the um, jacket copy. Uh, so, Philadelphia, um, 
Uh, so, uh, yeah, these guys are, are going to go investigate the death of this Caitlin. So, months before a teenage runaway's body was found in the desolate, dangerous North Philly district dubbed the Badlands. Dead runaways were no novelty on these mean Philadelphia streets. But the Caitlin O'Rordian case was different. Her corpse was found in the basement of a rancid tenement apartment. The inexplicable, the inexplicable cause of death, drowning. In the end, nothing is solved and the case was closed. So they found this body. Coroner said she drowned. And um, the case was kind of like they couldn't find any leads. And that's when things get tricky. And, and this is where I was starting to take notes that were spoiler filled. And so I just wanted to read what happens in the jacket. Now, a confession to the bizarre murder on the police tip line sends our two investigators rushing to make an arrest. But instead of a killer, they discover a ghastly scene, a jar containing human remains along with a cryptic clue leading to an unlikely witness. I believe the human remains that were found was a heart, if, I'm, if, I, if I remember correctly. Um, okay, so... So there's a cryptic uh, note with the um, remains. And that note leads them to an unlikely witness, Laura Somerville, who lives far from the ghettos of the Badlands and seems light years from any connection to the murder or the runaway. But moments before discussing the case with this elegant lady, um, our two investigators make another grisly discovery. And that was where I kind of spelled out the grisly discovery. In my notes, I wrote down the grisly discovery, which would have spoiled everything. Okay. Um, so anyway, um, so in, across town, there's another murder. There's another victim in a shallow grave. Anyway, this is uh, starts to um, get into serial killer territory. Secret diaries of women um, haunting, shocking past of everybody. And this is where the back and forth with the flashbacks go on. Um, the body count grows, yada, yada, yada. You know, it's a great little serial killer murder mystery. Um, what did I think of this overall? Um, probably because of the flashbacks. I'm going to be straight. My least favorite so far of a wonderful series so far. I'm going to give this 8 out of 10, whereas I know I think I gave the first three like close to 10s out of 10s. This one's getting an 8 out of 10. It still was really cool, and a lot of the um, grisly murder scenes were fun to read, if such a thing is possible. Um, and, uh, you know, I can't wait to get to the other books. So there you go for Badlands by Richard Montaneri.